I'm here to give you a sort of wash up on what I think the next five years is going to be. Um, we've had the Ray Jars the first for 18 months. We've got a new culture secretary. So we can begin to see the contours emerging in the landscape. And I think I'm, going to focus, I'm not going to particularly focus on radio because, to my mind, radio occupies about, what, a fifth of the BBC uh, budget. Nadine Dorries probably doesn't lie in bed thinking, you know, about the lineup at Drive and Breakfast on, on Magic or whether Amanda Holden's wearing enough clothes as she walks through Leicester Square and whether she's, she needs to wear a bit of more of a pulley rather than her, the, her choice outfits, which, of course, we all enjoy um, at Global. She's, you know, she's got several big things in her in-tray and she's come into the job uh, having said that David Cameron and George Osborne were two posh boys who didn't know the price of milk. So we know that her concern is impartiality. She's very against the old boy network. She's very anti-elitists. I've met her, and I think she's a, a good girl. She's a girl's girl. She's open and honest. Two schools of thought kind of in Westminster about her are either she's going to do exactly what she's told, and she's there because... She ticks a box, and she'll be compliant, and she'll execute the orders. The other school of thought is she won't. This is her, probably her, how high, as high as she'll go in government. This is her top job. It's not a way station on the way to being Chancellor of the Exchequer. And so she really wants to make a good fist of it and make the right decisions. And so that's why I think it's quite interesting when we look at what's the big things in her intro, like Ofcom, BBC, um, channel the uh, privatization of Channel 4, and, and th which are things I think I should talk to you about. Um, channel 4 is obviously under, it's in play. I think that it seems very likely. And I, by the way, I speak as an objective observer. I'm not telling you anything that is market sensitive. It's obviously in play because everybody's been discussing its sale for a long time. You've had chairman, past and previous chairman and uh, current chairman talking to the Commons Committee about it. I think the issue is, is if it is sold, what does it do to the British creative industries? And this is why I'm glad to speak to you as part of one of the great British creative industries, which is global, homegrown company. And, you know, there are too few of them around. Times Radio had a good book. 637,000 was its launch number. A good book, and everyone says, great, you know, Times Radio, UK News, but actually that's owned by News Corp, not a UK company. So we need to nourish and nurture UK business, UK companies, UK creative content. Channel 4 risks going out of UK hands because... What, the, what we're seeing is the Viacoms, the Comcasts are coming in, and they are buying the Channel 4s, the Channel 5s, the Skies. They're investing a lot. They're doing a lot in, in terms of technology. Look at Sky, uh, launching Sky Glass. You know, they're putting billions into these companies. So there's that. That's a good thing. The worry, the risk is, what if it isn't? What if the person who buys Channel 4 decides to change the remit? It's not free to air now. As many of you will agree, free is a, an attractive price point to many millions of customers. Free is what has given radio its huge lift during lockdown. It's not just that it's intimate and it's reassuring and it's entertaining and it's positive and it's, you know, it's part of all our lives. It's also free, which is why at LBC, um, at one point during one of my first um, broadcasts, I said something about, as you heard in the ad, and I said, and the producer said, we never talk about the ads. The ads are the lifeblood of the station. You know, you just don't talk about them. The advertisers are too important. You can't, you can't reflect on the ad, the content of the ad. So then I realized, you know, this is a commercial brand. That comes first. The callers come second. The presenters come third, in my view, anyway. Um, so Channel 4 is a big one in Nadine Dorries' entree. And I think a Tory government is always minded to privatize in the same sense that a Tory government is always against public sector broadcasting. But 
with Nadine Dorries, I think if Channel 4 can make a sort of alliance with her and say, if we keep it in-house, it's much more likely we can keep control over it, we can keep making British programmes for British people, she might buy that. It, you know, we can have more control on its eventual entity. And also, once you've sold something, you can't really keep the remit as tight as you have when it's a 1.2 billion asset currently held by the government. That, I think, is the main thing in her in trade. The BBC is the next. Um, I was actually literally in Manchester, two metres away from Nick Robinson, during the Today programme broadcast, where he said to my bro, stop talking. And, I, <laughs> and then she, Nadine Dorries, who's, as I say, she's a good girl. She doesn't like people being rude and entitled and arrogant, and that's how I think she read that situation. And so she then said to Nick Robinson, or somebody reported that Nick Robinson had cost the BBC a lot of money, and the BBC may not be here in 10 years. We now know that the license fee has been frozen at 159 pounds for the next two years. In my judgment, the BBC will be here in 10 years, but it is going to be an increasing struggle when you, when you, the whole of the BBC story, sorry, the television story is about streaming and subscription to have the BBC, which costs four billion to run, which gets three billion in from, it, from the license fee, to have that entity as a competitor. Um, the landscape's complex, uh, competitive, very diverse, and the, the lines are now interestingly blurring between all the media. Um, you know, the New York Times is launching a podcast. Apple, Spotify and Netflix are going into podcasts. Print's gone into radio. Everyone's doing the same thing, but everyone's chasing the same ears and eyeballs. So I'm glad to tell you that, you know, in terms of the replenisher audience, LBC were very pleased to see that we, a quarter of our audience, the 25s to 34s, were under 35. So that is the key market that everyone's fighting over. It's going to, but I haven't just said that, can I, when I was at the BB, no, at the FT, where I started my career in 1989, I started doing a TV show with none other than Robert Peston. So F, everyone's been trying to do lots of different things all the time. And I remember Alan Ravenscroft, who was uh, John Peel's brother, was editing this show. And John and Preston and I had to do a market report every night, sit squashed up together. And it got cancelled, of course, as everything does. And Alan Ravenscroft re reported back to the execs. He said, Robert Peston was absolutely hopeless, of course, but Rachel Johnson was a natural. And now look where Robert Peston is, and I'm on LBC, which I think I've ended up but in the better hot seat. Um, what's happening is... The other problem is audience share in an atomized market. Uh, Sky News is safe for another seven years because that's in its articles of sale to Comcast. So they've got seven more years. But as some very high up told me, I'm not going to say, starting a TV channel today is like investing in the combustion engine. This is why radio is so much safer than TV and also so much cheaper. Um, he also said in a UK population of 67 million, which means about, let's say, 55 million potential viewers, most news programs only get 150,000 viewers, which is statistically irrelevant. Then he went on to say that his marker, and this guy was a really big dog, he says well, all he thinks about is that there's this golden retriever on Instagram called Tucker, who has a bigger audience than most, uh, most news channels. Of, he's got an audience of 3.1 million. So remember that when you uh, get your next audience figures back or your next ratings. There's a golden retriever called Tucker who's got 3.1 million viewers. Um, so that's basically it. My time's up. Global's a fantastic homegrown business. LBC is a fantastic part of it. I'm incredibly happy to be part of it. There's more choice than ever before in accessing quality content, but that is at risk in the television universe. And this is the bit that might get me into trouble on Mail Online. Um, if there is going to be a viable environment for this content to survive, P providers, producers like the BBC and Channel 4 have got to feel they are working not in a hostile environment, but in an environment where the government 
actually, actually encourages British producers and creatives to tell British stories to British audiences that we can then sell globally and everybody's happy and put in someone in Ofcom. Let's not, um, as we did with Owen Patterson, simply you get the result you want, change the rules, the ref and the goalposts. Let's not just put in former editor of the Daily Mail because that's the one they want. Let's find somebody who wants British producers to tell British stories to British audiences, which we can then all sell overseas. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.